This webinar is entitled Money and Relationships. My name is Susan Harless and I'm a certified financial coach here in Coconino County Community Services. Today we're going to be talking about um, our relationship to money in multiple ways and we're going to start talking about how money has changed over the last several 20 years or so. Um, as you can see in this picture, there was a time when we had our wallets and we would have our cash in our wallets and when our wallets were empty, we stopped spending. And it was a very direct relationship to money, so we could feel it, we could see it, we used it to spend with it, and times are definitely starting to change. So you can see in this um, screen here how money started to get converted into um, digital formats, um, converted into credit cards, debit cards, um, we stopped using actual cash in our wallets, and things became a lot more electronically used to purchase things. Um, and now a lot of our spending is done um, with the debit card and with the credit card and um, very much little is used with our cash. And what this has done for us on a conscious level is that it has distanced us a lot from our finances and our money. And that, how that makes a difference in our life is that if we're in a financial crisis or if our finances are not looking the way that we would like them to look, um, it could be due to the fact that we're not as connected to our money as we used to. And last week you learned about money management tools, the budget and the cash flow um, calendar. These were all ways to help bring yourself back connected to money. Um, another way that we use um, technology today is by using our cell phones. We can um, quickly purchase things from Amazon.com. Um, we can use PayPal and Google Wallet. These are all um, technology that helps us with uh, efficiency and very quickly we can spend um, our money through these tools. And so that is a really great upside to technology. Um, the downside of the technology is that we, if we don't have money management tools in place, it's harder for us to keep track of how much money we have, how much we're spending, and what's the real cost of the things that we're purchasing. So one of the ways that we can build that relationship back to, back with money is um, by spending one hour a week checking your finances. And what this does is when we talk about developing your relationship with money, it's about just like any other relationship. The more time you spend with it, the better that you know that person or um, you have things in common that you share. So spending one hour a week with your finances is a similar concept in the sense that in that one hour you want to check to see what income has come in and what expenses that you expect to pay that week. And maybe you're also checking if you're doing um, online um, bill pay or doing all of your accounting online, you want to check your bank account to make sure it is the amount that you think it is, that there wasn't a transaction that was done that maybe isn't yours. You're also checking your credit cards during this one hour. Um, in the sense that you want to make sure that those charges that have gone through on your credit card are your charges. And that's what it, it's meant as spending time with your money. Also, using your money management tools to track your money, whether it be an electronic um, app that you use or if it's um, a worksheet that's done on paper. Part of that process of using those money management tools is not only to know how much money is coming in and how much is going out, but it makes it very real and very um, concrete. When you write those numbers down and you do the math, you're going to know exactly how much you have to spend or, or how little you have to spend. Another way to develop your relationship with money is by getting your credit report, um, and we're going to talk about that um, in about another two weeks, about um, credit cards. And getting a, a current credit report, you're going to be looking at your history of your spending, what your credit, re, um, credit score is, and how you can improve that. 
Another way that you want to develop um, your relationship with money is by creating a plan, whether that's a plan for spending, um, you know, planning your spending for the week, or for saving for particular items that you want to save for, or for paying down debt. One of the ways that you can reconnect and develop that relationship with money in a, using another tool is called the envelope system. This envelope system is used to help discipline yourself. Um, if you're finding that maybe you've created a budget but you're challenged with trying to stay within those dollar limits, this is a really great way to begin to develop that habit of staying within your budget. And how this envelope system works is that you can see here that there's an envelope for rent, there's one for food, there's another one for savings. The first step is to make sure that you have your budget done so that you can see where your income is going to get expensed out of. So you have a dollar amount for how much your rent is or how much food is in your budget. So say, for example, you had $150 budgeted for food for the month. You're going to have an envelope that has food on it with $150. And when you get your check cash, you're going to take that cash of $150 and place it in that envelope. When you go to the grocery store, you're going to take that envelope with you, and then you're going to use that cash to pay for your groceries. The important thing is, is that once that envelope is empty, you're done with that particular category. Now, I know some people might want to borrow from other envelopes, but the real key is to try to stay within that category and, and not borrow from other envelopes. Or, um, and, and to just use what you have budgeted for yourself. Um, another category could be gas for your car. So if you have $20 um, budgeted for um, gas for the month, you put that cash in the envelope, and then when you go to get gas, you take your cash out, pay for your gas, and when that envelope is empty, you're done in that particular category. This is a really great way to begin with developing those habits of creating your budget, staying within your budget categories. Um, you'll really start to feel a sense of empowerment and a, a sense of success that you really can stay within the, um, the boundaries that you have for your spending and eventually be able to have money for savings. Um, the next category we're going to be talking about is to understand ourselves a little bit about what our money, our money habits actually are. And one of the ways that we can gather some self-awareness around that is looking about how we um, were taught as children how money was managed in our household. So on this particular screen here, you're going to see several different questions, and I invite you to pause this webinar for a couple of moments and go through and answer each of those questions just to give yourself an idea of um, what, were you, what were you shown or role modeled as a child in regards to money. This is going to be a great way for you to be able to discover if there is a particular habit that you are um, engaging in today that either benefits you or is creating stress and crisis for you. And that's really what this exercise is really all about. Um, just to make sure that you bring awareness around those habits. And we're going to talk about that, those awarenesses in a little bit. Um, this screen here is talking about beliefs and feelings around prosperity and lack consciousness. And you can see by this picture on the left-hand side, the tree is very full and abundant, and there's lots of fruit on it. And on the right-hand side, it's very scarce. There's no fruit. And you can see the picture of the, the little um, gentleman there with his head hanging low. And that's a visual picture of what prosperity and lack consciousness looks like. But the exercise that I would like to give you at this time, and again, if you'd like to pause the webinar to, to write these down, write, it down, write down a couple of ideas um, around what do you think a prosperous consciousness feels like? Like somebody who is prosperous and abundant, how are they feeling on a regular basis? What are the things are they thinking? And the same for the lack consciousness. So how do you think that person on the right-hand side is actually feeling in that moment? Um, and some examples I could throw out is that um, prosperity 
Maybe there's more than enough. The person's very generous. Um, all of my needs are met. And then on the right-hand side is maybe there's not enough or I'm not worthy. And those are some examples of the different um, beliefs and feelings that you can list as you go through this exercise. And it's really important as you go through this exercise to kind of become aware of where do you feel that you are most of the time. Are your thoughts and your feelings in abundance and prosperity? Or do you spend a lot of time in lack and limitation? Because we're going to talk a little bit about that a little bit later in the sense of how can you move yourself from one state of mind to another, right? Because the state of mind is just about where you're thinking, which creates your feelings. And we all have been in those moments where we're in a really great state, things are going really well, and we've also had those times where um, we felt that um, we were really struggling and there wasn't enough and how to shift your thinking so that way you can move your thinking from lack to prosperity more quickly as you bring more awareness around this. And that's really what this exercise is about. This exercise here is changing your beliefs to create new actions. So in that first exercise, when you're identifying what habits or um, behaviors you were role modeled as a child, if there was something in particular that stood out for you that was not working for you. So a lot of times when we're doing these types of webinars, we're hoping to be able to improve our financial circumstances. And can we identify one particular habit that we're doing that is creating some financial crisis for ourselves? This little exercise will be able to take that habit and transform it into something new and different that you'll be able to move forward with. So, for example, um, what is the belief that I want to change and why? So if maybe one of, the, um, one of the beliefs that someone wanted to change was, um, I, I can never save, you know? And step two is, what do I want to change it to? is that maybe I believe that I can make enough money to save for the things that I want. And then three is, what new actions will I take by adopting this new belief? And maybe somebody who wants to adopt a saving habit would start to save maybe their change in a jar or to save any time they get a dollar bill or a five dollar bill and they put that aside. And that would be the new action that they are adopting because their new belief is, is that I have enough to save. And then four is like, how will my life be different? And in this, this example, maybe a person's life, what will be different is that maybe they feel a little bit more at peace, a more sense of safety and security because they're actually taking action to create savings so that they know that that money is there for any crises in the future. And that's how you can use this particular tool to begin to change any habits or any belief systems that you're holding now that aren't serving you anymore. Our next topic is really talking about relationships and, and money and how incredibly powerful a conversation around money can be to the success of a relationship. Money, as you know, can be a major conflict um, in, in relationships and marriages. And a lot of times, money can represent power and independence and security and love. A lot of relationships may not start off that relationship discussing money. Or is the person a saver or is that person a, a spender? And having open conversations about how you can um, Talk openly and honestly about where you are financially before maybe things um, get more committed. So um, one of the benefits of talking about money is so that you can understand who has financial baggage and what that financial baggage actually looks like. Um, because when the truth is actually understood and respected, it increases the likelihood for understanding and respecting each other's financial beliefs and behaviors. 
And if you can engage in this type of conversation early on, what you're actually creating is open and honest communication that is um, not emotionally charged, but you get an idea of where, where each person stands in regards to what they're bringing to the relationship. And when you have that conversation on the so-called financial baggage, you're also having that conversation about who's going to be responsible for that, that debt um, going forward. So the person who brings that debt to the relationship, will they be responsible for paying that debt down? Or will partners come together and put their resources to pay that debt down? As you can see, there could be many scenarios here um, about how to deal with this. Money affects so many areas of our lives in, in the sense of money determines, you know, what we have, where we go, what we do, that to have this conversation very early on in the relationship will help you to create a foundation to have a successful relationship and to be able to create together what you both want. So the goal of talking about money is to help couples talk about money matter-of-factly, proactively, and unemotionally. And this helps to eliminate crisis, which results when no basic understanding of financial styles, responsibilities, or goals exist. This helps to set that foundation of deciding what the two partners together want to create, what they have brought into the relationship, how they can pay the debt off, and then what they can save for their future. Other things that you want to include in that talk is financial goal setting. So in regards to what do the two people think that they're going to do with their money? You know, a lot of times we're in that, you know, um, rut of kind of just making our money and paying our bills. But are there some goals that you can set together that when you pull your, your money together that um, together you can be stronger than if you were apart. Um, discussion about health and life insurance, whether one person chooses to um, purchase a house, whether they have that as a desire of being in the partnership, purchasing a house or not, which is a major um, item to purchase. Um, family planning, our children in you know, part of the relationship. And then also saving for financial goals, such as a new car or car repairs. And deciding on who will be responsible for tracking the expenses or um, saving for these particular items. And on this next screen, and we won't go through all of these questions, but these are really great questions to be able to sit down whether if you just sat together um, once a week for a short while and talked about some of these, but they really help you to understand each person's um, belief systems, um, where they plan on going, what are their habits, and to really um, give you a foundation for that open communication so that way, if there is a crisis that does happen, you already have an idea of how you'll handle that so that it's, it, you can move through it a little bit easier. So those are the topics that were covered in this webinar. I hope you were able to find some simple tools to um, begin to manage your money um, in the, to create a financial um, foundation that is really beneficial to you. And uh, thank you.